If you own an old building with a traditional tile or slate roof in the UK, you face a dilemma. Eventually those tiles or slates will need to be replaced. And this is where traditional construction meets modern problems. If this isn't handled properly, damp and rot could take hold and destroy your roof. But I am going to show you how to avoid this without spending money on unsightly vents or stripping out the old ceiling to fit a vapour barrier. Most people don't realise the real problem is inside the building, and it starts with the way we live today. We generate far more moisture in our homes now than we ever used to. Along with cooking and boiling water for tea or coffee, we have washing machines, tumble dryers, dishwashers and showers. On top of this, older homes are often modified or upgraded significantly. Installing central heating, adding double glazing, blocking up chimneys and sealing drafts can actually cause problems. The average family in the UK generates between 10 and 15 litres of moisture every day. And central heating means the warm air inside our homes carries more of that moisture. It just floats around looking for a way to escape. At this point, you might be thinking, what does that have to do with the roof? Its job is to keep out the rain, but that is not the full story. A traditional roof in the UK is vapour open. It can breathe. It was built to allow moisture inside the house to get out before damp and rot could take hold. Things can go wrong when we introduce modern methods and materials into traditional homes. We can trap moisture inside, building up damp in the roof and potentially rotting the timbers. The classic scenario is when older homes need to be re-roofed. Traditional slate and tile have a limited lifespan. After a century or two of dealing with wind, rain, ice, snow and the occasional heat wave, they start to fall apart and have to be replaced. That's the situation on one of my own projects right now. This house in Fife dates from the 18th century. The clay pan tiles on this one story outshoot needed to be replaced. The owner also wanted to remove the chimney. It wasn't original, it was no longer in use and was leaning to one side. The outshoot is used as a utility room, so it generates a lot of moisture for such a small space. The house is listed and in a conservation area, so the owner needed permission to replace the roof. The planners take an interest in the type of tiles used in renovation, as well as removing old features like the chimney, so I got listed building consent and planning permission to do the work. This is a really small project, but it serves as a really good example of how to do re-roofing. It's the kind of job an experienced DIYer could take on, provided they understand some basic principles. It might help at this stage to explain how a modern house deals with moisture, so you can understand why doing it in the same way on older homes can cause problems. A new home takes a two-step approach to moisture. We seal it inside the house using a vapour barrier, and then we suck it out using a mechanical extractor. A vapour barrier is usually just a thick plastic sheet and a mechanical extractor is just an electric fan. The problem is that these two elements cost money, take up space and they can fail. Not only that, but a mechanical extractor vent is visible on the outside of the building and that's not a good look on older properties. Vapour barriers can fail when switches, sockets and lights are installed by cutting through the barrier if it's fitted just behind the plasterboard. To avoid this, we sometimes use a false lining or service void to run wires and pipes, but that takes up space and increases costs. If all these modern methods and materials cause problems in older buildings, why not just rebuild the roof exactly as they did in the past? And it's a good question, but it doesn't take account of one big issue. Slates and tiles do not keep out all the rain. Traditional roofs leak, especially during wind-driven rain. That's okay when they can breathe, because they will dry out again once the wind blows and the sun shines. Slates or tiles, like on this roof, are not 100% waterproof. Modern roofs are a two-stage system. The outer covering of slates or tiles is the primary weather protection, but the underlay membrane provides secondary protection. Older roofs that don't have any membrane can leak during wind-driven rain. And that was fine when buildings were inherently drafty and could dry out, but that doesn't work if older buildings have been sealed up over time. You might be familiar with materials like roofing felt. It was first introduced in the late 19th century and became widely used in the UK about 100 years ago. The problem with felt is that it is just too waterproof. It keeps out the rain, but it also traps moisture inside the building. To prevent this from rotting roof timbers, we add vents to the ridge and the eaves at the top and the bottom of the sheet of felt. Or sometimes we fit tiles or slates with vents built into them. The trouble is, none of these vents look right on an older property. So what do we do with an historic roof like this one? We want to keep the building dry, but we also need it to breathe. We don't want to add complex vapour barriers inside or modern vents that change the appearance outside. The answer is this material. It's called Proctor Air, and it's made by Proctor Group. They sponsored this video, and they donated a roll of material to the project. Proctor Air is both vapour permeable and air permeable. 
It's made from three layers and each are hydrophobic. This means it can provide secondary weather protection while still allowing moisture to pass out of the roof structure from the inside. Proctor Air has an upper side and an underside. I dyed some water red so you can see it clearly. Look at how the water runs off the surface of the material. That's the hydrophobic part. Next, I rigged up a test to see how Proctor Air dealt with being saturated. I caught a hole in the lid of this jar and held the material in place, with the upper side facing the jar. I then filled the jar with more coloured water, turned it upside down and left it for an hour. Not a drop of liquid got through the material in that time. Proctor Group are very clear in their literature that Proctor Air is not waterproof. They describe it as weather tight, but this is impressive all the same. Next up, I tested the air permeability. I cut the valve out of a tyre inner tube and placed it in the lid, then I placed the material on top as before. I connected this hand pump and as soon as I started, bubbles came through the membrane. You can see they emerge in the centre right over the valve. I hardly applied any force and bubbles started to rise up from the material. I guess that's why they call it Proctor Air. This stuff really is amazing. Air can pass through it while it keeps water out from this side but allows it to pass through from the other side. After I discussed the footage with Proctor Group, they sent me their own, much more professional, testing rig, which they call the Bubbler. It shows the air permeability much more clearly. Because Proctor Air is air permeable, it simplifies ventilation considerably. That means this roof does not need a vapour barrier inside the building and it does not need a vent on the outside of the roof. That capability improves the weather tightness of the roof while retaining its original appearance and it does this by allowing moisture to escape through the roof much as it always did. Moisture inside the building can still migrate out through the ceiling and roof structure while the Proctor air membrane provides effective secondary protection from the weather. It can be used on traditional English construction draped between the rafters or on traditional Scottish sarking boards like this project. These sarking boards will dry out over time and the gaps between them will open to allow air to move. Sam, our roofing contractor, fixed drip trays at the base of the roof to drain water into the gutters. He then rolled out Proctor Air and cut it slightly long where it meets the wall. Proctor print a handy guide on their membrane to show how much overlap should be left between every sheet. Proctor Air doesn't require any special fixings and Sam used regular clout nails to secure the membrane into every rafter. The membrane is easy to install. Sam covered this roof in just half an hour and it looks really neat. These wooden strips are the first part of a batten system that will hold the new tiles in place. Proctor Air can also be used on roofs with solar panels. The only type of roof it won't work on is where modern plywood or OSB sheeting has been used. Proctor Air won't work in this situation because the large boards block the airflow. Restrictions like this are usually detailed in a product's third party certification, which can vary quite a bit between roofing membranes, and there are a lot of membranes out there. One thing Proctor Group are known for is their technical helpline. No matter how complex or unique the project, these guys will be able to tell you how to use their products correctly. Proctor Air costs between £100 and £220 per roll, depending on the size of the order. It's usually available in two to three working days, and there are no minimum order quantities, which is ideal if you have a small project like this one. The end result is fantastic. No ugly vents, no need to strip the ceiling internally to install a vapour control layer, and the roof is now protected from driving rain. This building is over 200 years old, and after this renovation, it will be good for another 200. If you have any questions about using Proctor Air on your project, Proctor Group have a dedicated technical helpline that can provide detailed advice. Their online training seminars are very informative, and they also have loads of really great technical information on their YouTube channel, including a regular podcast. I am really happy to have Proctor Group as a partner for the Real Life Architecture channel. I've put a link to the Proctor Group website in my profile. Tell them Neil from Real Life Architecture sent you.